If you're studying or working in academia, you can't get around reviewing literature. In this video, I will be showing you all the useful tips, tricks, hacks and tools that I use to review literature in an entirely new topic for me. And the best part is I'm actually going to do it now. So it's currently 10.30 p.m. at night. It's Ramadan. I work at night between Iftar and Sahur. And I'm going to work five hours now and I'm going to review literature with you guys. And I'm going to film the process and give you all the insights I have. So it's going to be a very very useful and information dense video and I think you're going to profit a lot from it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. By the way, my name is Aynur. I'm a second year PhD student at Imperial College London and this literature review is also going to be related to fluid dynamics. Let's get it. In the next five hours, we're going to go through four stages of reviewing literature. The first step is we're going to go and find core papers and core papers are like, these could be like review papers or very important papers in that field that cover a broad range of this topic already. Then we're going to use a literature mapping tool to map all the dependencies from the core papers and all the other papers that develop from these core papers. Then the third step is to look at all the different articles and filter additional ones that we need that could be useful. And then we're going to start the tedious reading process. So we're going to read through them and we're going to take notes. And we're going to go through all these four steps together in this video. So when I'm looking for core papers, the first page I go to is lens.org. Lens.org is like Google Scholar. You can basically scan the literature, use it like Google Scholar, but it has much more filters. When you start a search, you can say either scholarly works or patents. So we're going to look for scholarly works now. And um, then I'm going to post all the keywords that I need. So I'm going to do research on Carlos sense behavior. Carlos difficult word to write in for bubbles and with alcohol in it and I'm also gonna add and water because that's the fluids that I'm using so you can see like even at first glance how many different options I have to filter the search results that I don't have in Google Scholar so it's really super good like I can definitely recommend you to use lens.org at least try it out it's for free so now um, I'm going to read through uh, the title and I'm going to see whether all the keywords are within the abstract or the title. So for example, the first one suits very well. It's, it has all the keywords called scents, air, bubbles, aqueous solutions means water, and then we've got alcohol. Okay. So that was, I always open them like on a side page, on a tab, and then I go back to them later on. So let's see, contents of bubbles and aqueous are core solutions. Amazing, that's what we want. Hydronyms to face flow for coalescing and non-coalescing systems. Here in the title, I don't read anything of alcohol, so I'm not sure whether that suits, whether that suits but I'm going to read the abstract, and here I see that alcohol has been used in this study, so I'm going to open it as well. Uh, face one and gas hold up in bubble column reactors. This one, I mean, it has alcohol in it. It goes a little bit into the coalescence part, but it does not really, it's not giving core paper. It has none of the things I'm looking for in the title besides just bubble. And it's more about like gas hold up. So I already know it might have something to do with the research field that I'm looking at, but you know, not entirely. Yeah, I think for starters, that's enough. Like I now have three papers. That does not sound much, but it's gonna take a lot of time to skim through them. And before I open many, many more tabs, I'm just gonna skim through them right now to see whether I might have found a core paper or two already, or whether I have to continue my search, okay? I'm gonna skim through the abstracts and maybe the introduction results part of potential core papers that we're then gonna use for our literature mapping tool. Lens.org, when you look at the sources part at the bottom right corner, you have all the links to get directed to the source of this paper. So I'm just going to click on one of these links and then we've got the Science Direct page and I can click on View PDF because I'm already logged in with my college credentials. So now we've got the paper. Obviously, first things first, I'm going to read through the abstract now. Yeah. <laughs> 
So I just finished reading through the abstract and so far it seems like it suits um, my research area. And now I'm going to read through or skim through the results and discussions. That's just to be extra sure, but it seems to be a good fit for me to start reading. So results and discussions first, and then I'm going to check the other core papers, whether they're useful or not. A few moments later. Okay, now I finished reading the results part and I think this paper is pretty awesome. So I'm going to keep that open in a tab and I'm going to read through the two other papers now that I also chose as a core paper. So this one is definitely a core paper. It's a very useful one. I'm going to keep it. Since um, reviewing literature is all about procrastinating, let's check how aqueous is pronounced. Oh, that was the German part. Let's do the English one. Aqueous. Aqueous. Okay, and the British version? Aqueous. Aqueous. Okay, I'm going to stick to the British one because I live in the UK at the moment. Aqueous. Aqueous. Okay, got it. Aqueous. Aqueous solutions. Sounds good. You know, it doesn't even take that long. I'm basically just skimming the paper through all the core keywords that I have. And I'm just, I'm not even, I'm not trying to understand the physics behind the paper that I'm going to do later on when I sit down and I take like an hour or two to read through a paper. That's the final step. Now I'm just trying to filter. I'm trying to understand whether this paper is worth my time to read through, whether it fits the research area. And that does not take up that much time. You just skim through the keywords and see whether all keywords are being matched or not. So this paper is also a very good one. I'm going to keep it. A few minutes later. We're done with part one now. So I found two core papers that fit very well into my literature research area. And now we're going to move over to the literature mapping tool. I use Research Rabbit. There are quite a few literature mapping tools out there, but Research Rabbit is an entirely free one. It's based on donations. It's like Wikipedia. You can use it entirely for free. There is no pro and premium plan for it. So I can definitely recommend you very highly recommend to use research rabbit it's a free resource while i was adding these two papers into the collection i found two more that were interesting for my case so i added them as well so now i have four core papers which is sufficient and now what we can do is we can explore papers that are related to our core papers so then what it does is it creates this mind map for me the green dots are basically the core papers the one that I put in and the 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 blue ones are papers that I didn't even consider before and the closer the blue dots are to the core paper the more they are related from their topic to the core paper a few inches later so now I found a paper that fits to the description so here I have the abstract which is usually enough to understand whether this paper might be a good choice or not. As I said, the detailed reading, we're going to do that later. Now I'm literally just collecting all the literature that I'm going to use for my review. So I'm going to click to add to collection and now it's in the collection for me to read. And yeah, now I'm going to continue. Page two is completed. I collected all the literature I need. Now I'm going to download all of them and then I'm going to start reading them. And while I'm reading them, I'm going to take notes. And for to take notes, I'm using Notion. Now we're basically entering the very tedious, long part of reading and taking notes. The good part is the Notion template is there for you to download for free. I'm going to put the link uh, below. And we're going to have a look into the Notion template now and I'm going to teach you how you can use it best. In this Notion template, I added um, these icons for different subtopics. Subtopic means, for example, today I'm looking at Qualisense in aqueous solutions with bubbles. So that's one subtopic. And basically what you're going to do is you're just going to rename this part and give it the name that you want. You can basically add as many as you want um, and just duplicate this here and then you have like uh, more and more subtopics, as many as you need. This list basically just grows with your PhD, so the longer 
you're in your PhD, the more subtopics you'll have eventually. I have like a lot <laughs> at the moment. And uh, yeah, so this is just another one in the list. So now you can click on there and then you'll be redirected to a database and this database has like um, an example in it so that you know how it's built and in this example I already named a couple of columns for example here I said measurement technique, nozzle diameter, nozzle shape and then also there is this place where you can link your files in um, this is super cool because since you've downloaded the files to your computer anyway, so you can just link them here and if you need to like open and reread them, you'll always have it in that database table and you don't need to search for them. And then also on the final part, I always include the reference. So this is just um, makes it easier in the future if you're looking things up so you have like everything in there in one glance. But also I want to show you when you click in the first column to open, you can open this entire database um, like this. And then you can also see that I included uh, a lot of screenshots in there as well. So when you read a paper and you have like useful figures, graphs, equations or whatever what, you can always um, include screenshots in your urination template as well so that you have all the important information sum summarized in one single database name all the columns I have to start reading and that's what I'm gonna do now and this is something where I'm not gonna let the camera rolling because that's a very tedious boring task at the moment it's 0 0.30 if you start our literature review topic from scratch it's gonna take you a while to read the paper because everything you're gonna read is gonna be new for you when I started my PhD it took me a week to finish a review paper and to really understand it so depending on whether you're really new new into your PhD or you're in your second year and you're just pivoting into a different direction um, it'll take you more or less time to read through a paper. So now I'm gonna open one of the um, core papers and yeah, first I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna mark the important parts of it and then I'm gonna think of a structure for the table and when I have the structure ready, I'm gonna open the camera again and we're gonna continue with this. A few inches later. Okay guys, it's way too late o'clock. It's literally almost 3 a.m. Finished the first paper now and what I want to do now is I want to adjust the Notion template. I'm going to show you how I'm doing that so that you can do this for yourself when you review literature. I'm going to start with first of all deleting all this because that was just an example. I basically took some notes when I read through the literature and I thought you know what would be useful for me at first glance to know what this paper was about like as a good note-taking and summary stuff. Now since I'm looking at coalescence with alcohols, um, it would be interesting to know what kind of alcohol did they use here in this um, paper. So I'm gonna name this alcohol type. Here we've got the alcohols. I'm interested in alcohol concentration in the solution. Zero to eight. So as I'm filling in the table, I want you to know that this literature review table is a working document. This means the more you read into your specific topic, the more you'll know which parameters actually matter. And then you'll just go back to your table, adjust the rows and the columns and make it really fit to your research topic. So once you're done with that, and you've read all the papers and you filled in the table and you've got multiple rows of different papers and key insights now, it's time for a little recap of what we've done in this super long literature review session. So I'm gonna go through all the four steps now to review literature. The first thing that you need is to find core papers. What did we say about core papers? Core papers are very specific papers that really cover your topic very well. Usually those are like some review papers 
really influential papers in your research field once you get like two or three core papers that you find either through your google scholar search or through lens.org and you're going to find them by scanning the abstract and the title for keywords that really match very well with your research topic. This is the first thing that you're going to do. Once you put a check across that, you're then going to upload all these core papers into a literature mapping tool. Literature mapping tool, a free one, is ResearchRabbit. That's entirely for free. Go use it, check it out. But there are many, many others out there as well who do like a similar thing than ResearchRabbit. So you log in these two or three core papers into ResearchRabbit and then you're going to see a network of papers that are all related to the core papers, which is a great way to find other similar articles that cover similar topics. So then you're going to again read through the abstracts, through the title and see whether these articles relate well to your research area. And if they do so, you go ahead and now that's step number three, you download many, many more papers, let's say so that you have in the end maybe 10, 15 papers or articles in that topic. You download them all into folder on your computer. And now, up until here, I feel like literature review is quite okay. We can manage. This is something that you can do within one day maybe. But then comes the part where we actually have to read these 15 papers and articles. So what you then do is you open the literature review notion template that I've provided for you for free. Link is in the description. You're going to download it. You're going to open the table and then you're going to start reading. While you read, you're going to adjust the columns and the rows of the table. You're going to try to really narrow down which parts are important. Uh, for this literature review and then you're going to start taking notes and you're going to do that for every single paper that you read for every single article that you read some might be more important than others you'll just figure it out while you go along with it but make sure to, uh, to take notes while you do that and in the end you'll have a large spreadsheet a super nice table with which summarizes perfectly what you've read so far and how it is important for your field and for your literature review. And this is basically the end. Then you have like all the important data that you need. And this is the final part is the most time consuming and the most disgusting part. But I guess we all have to kind of go through it, right? So step by step, these are the four steps. Now we've come to the end of this video. Before ending this video, I just want to give you a quick assurance that reading articles in a research field where you're new in is a tedious job. It took me one week to read one review paper when I first started my PhD. So it's normal. It's going to take some time, but you're just going to get through it. And with time, you'll see how we get faster and faster and faster and it'll get more easier. And in the end, you'll be able to read an article in an hour or two max, you know? So you'll get through it. It's totally normal. It's not you. <laughs> it's just that you're not familiar with that research area yet. So don't forget to download the Notion template in the description. And also, if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, leave a comment. You don't know how much this helps for me and this YouTube channel to grow and reach more people. And also, if you haven't done so already, make sure to follow me on Instagram because I upload lots, tons of useful videos there almost every single day, all related to academia. So make sure to scan this QR code and uh, yeah, leave a follow. And other than that, have a lovely day wherever you are and see you in the next video. Bye bye.